Hey, peace family. Um, I hardly ever do lives and stuff. Um, I was doing some lives for a while for, um, you know, just sharing some of the yoga system that I created. And um, I'm definitely going to get back into that now that the weather's, weather's better and I'll be able to go outside soon. Uh, well, I'm be able to go outside. Um, I'm going to get back to doing that. So I had to move indoors for the winter a little bit. Um, but I wanted to share some stuff um, kind of like right off the cuff. Um, I'm starting a, a journey, well I'm in the middle of a journey I should say, it's never ending and never beginning, um, on just connecting with a, with a place where there's like real self-love going on and um, I have been kind of inspired to do this or even just to kind of even begin this journey because I had a lot of success, like I had, um, I went through a uh, pretty long string of um, negative relationships um, where I was like the savior and uh, the person who was you know sad and pitiful for the other person and and hoping to help them grow and be better and be stronger and things like that and um, realizing that in the process of trying to help other people grow who either aren't willing to grow or just don't know how that I was getting um, sick and more toxic myself so um, I actually ended up affecting my physical health in the process of that. And, um, but before I even had gotten to the, like, the manifestation, before it had even manifested into my physical, I really fell into like, a really bad and negative place. And I realized that um, after the last negative relationship that I had, that I never, ever, ever wanted to be in a space of having negative relationships again. So I took a year off from like, and you know, any kind of connecting with anyone and spent time building myself up and um, just reconnecting with parts of myself that needed healing and um, exposing new layers, you know, cause I'm always doing that all the time anyway. Um, and so I did it with a very specific focus. So I was like really heavy. I was doing flower essences and doing um, chakra work and um, every, type of, every type of energetic and uh, mental and uh, EFT tapping. I was doing all sorts of work just to try to get myself into a space where that just wasn't my reality anymore. And um, so I, I'm, I'm really thankful because at the end of that particular journey, that particular focus, I was able to manifest um, a, an incredibly, incredibly happy relationship. And I am like really, really, really joyful and really blessed in the space where I am. So I know that the work that I'm, that I did and that I'm doing and putting in is actually helping. So, um, after like achieving that, which is like a major success for me after like, cause I went through like 10 years of like savior relationships where I was just trying to help people. And I just have that compassionate heart and I want to see everybody happy and everybody win and everybody grow. And I realized I was like throwing myself away just to see other people rise. And, um, yeah, so it was just such a long time. I was just so beat down by the end of that. And I'm, um, hey, people, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. <laughs> thank you for listening. Um, and so, yeah, so, so like I said, so I got to the space of being in like the, the happiest, most positive relationship that I've had in like many, 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 many years in a, in a sense of, because I, you know, not to, not to, um, you know, I, I don't want to like, uh, well, I don't know. I, I, I'll, I'll try not to go off track because <laughs> I'm good for that. Um, but yeah, I just want to say that I'm in a really happy space with that and I feel good about the work that I put in and I feel amazing about what I got out of that good work. So um, my next focus area is going to be going into a place of self-love because I know how, the, how we feel about ourselves has such a huge effect on our abundance level. And even though I was able to quit my regular nine to five and um, completely work for myself and turn my kind of little side businesses that I had been um, nervous to start for years um, into an actual full-time thing. So like I'm, I'm free now, I, I work from home, I work from my computer. So um, when I used to work in cafes and I would see people just chilling, lounging with a you know fourth latte um, while I was you know running around and scrubbing stuff and things like that, like working way below what my, you know, my value level and my knowledge and gifts are. Um, and wishing, you know, wow, I wish I could do that. Why can't I just be the person who's just sitting on their laptop and making money and I can travel around the world and everything. And I can be that and I, and I became that. And, um, and so now I'm ready to take that to the next level because I'm living in this space of um, where, where what I earn for a living is like getting by and things like that. But 
um, and I found the love of my life and so like all these you know things are falling into place but I have but I hit a block I hit a block and I realize that unless I heal this next layer within myself um, I won't be able to move past that abundance block and step forward so um, so my big issue like with me personally um, I have like a deep like a profoundly deep self-criticism problem um, and um, just to give like a really short background because I don't want to make it into like a pity thing or anything like that but um, I had some really serious traumatic incidents happen when I was a child um, I was my entire third grade year I was very seriously sexually assaulted and abused um, until it just got me and you know like I totally broken I was seven years old um, and then um, and my parents had divorced uh, my mother passed away when I was eight um, all of the, the sexual abuse took place while she was in the hospital dying so then after she passed away I went to live with my father and my father was abusive and my father is a psychologist and he knows exactly how to cut people so sharply and deeply with words hey hey sis <laughs> um, uh, so he knew how to totally destroy you within in order to because he was very controlling so he knew how to and he, this was like you know my my, my um, stepmother went through this as well you know I went through this and my brothers and sister also and like in their own ways everybody got it differently but I was the oldest and um, I was the only child from my mother who he probably didn't like and didn't want to remember that he had done bad things to so I got it extra hard but I was like very very seriously emotionally abused and very um, and, and I was also physically abused so um, I I mean I was never told that I was you know attractive I was never told that the things I did were, were good so um, after a while after experiencing constant abuse and criticism you in, in order to defend yourself against the abuse against the external abuse you start to um, try to like do a whole internal scan and find everything that can possibly be wrong with you so that you catch whatever is wrong before the person who is outside of you can catch it and so I developed this and so like my entire childhood um, which is crazy because it's such a short period of my life but I mean it's our childhood that's our formative time and um, <laughs> um, so <laughs> in Christ I'm not sure what you mean by that uh, Patrick but you'll tell me later I guess um, yeah so in in my you know the years when my mind was still forming I learned one of my most internal lessons was to learn how to like totally critically analyze myself so that nobody else could do it so I so when you're critically analyzing yourself you're searching for everything that's wrong and so my internal voice my internal way of speaking to myself is to scrape through me and find everything that's wrong and I mean it's so toxic it's so toxic and so sick and sad and it's like a habit that I have improved on through life but I haven't been able to heal completely um, and it got to the point where there were times in life like when I was in my uh, maybe I won't mention my age this time for everybody who doesn't know but um, but when I was in my 20s uh, I spent a lot of time I was in, I was into punk rock <laughs> believe it or not I was like a punk rock you know purple mohawk spikes you know all that stuff um, and you know I was I was always connected with some movement that was like anti-system and everything in my entire life since I was 14 but I was into the punk rock thing and stuff and then I got into rave rave parties and that was in London so we would be underground rave taking drugs all the time and party ecstasy acid and just like having a you know great time and, and partying our you know lives up and um, I spent a long time uh, and I was never addicted to drugs but I spent a long time using certain drugs all the time because when I when I would use them they were literally the only thing at the first time in my life that I experienced that voice shutting up in me that critical voice that was just scraping through me and just hating everything about myself and um, I I had to go through so I had to go through all the letting go of that you know system of life that way of life when I had my daughter a surprise she was a surprise a, a blessing like a deep and powerful blessing and a, and a surprise so um, the fact that she came as a surprise made it like that I had to force myself to switch who I was um, change up my reality or else I knew that I was gonna mess up somebody else's life so I had to do like a lot of internal work 
Um, so, so the whole party lifestyle was just like not feasible anymore. Um, and, uh, and I had to find another way because of course, as soon as all the party and the party drugs stopped, the critical voices came back and came back even worse because there were other things that I was like, oh man, you know, when I was like, you know, in those days, why did I do that? Oh, I shouldn't have done that time. And so I had even more stuff that I had to, you know, get out of me and heal and talk through and work through. Um, but yeah, like this is like a years and years and years journey. Um, I'm still very slowly learning how to not um, be so sharp and so critical with myself. And I know people who they'll look at me and they're like, oh my God, but you're gorgeous, you're intelligent, you know, you're fun, you're warm, what's the matter? And believe it or not, I mean, it's, it's like a weird thing to say because I, I know that it's weird because I look at other women sometimes who are self-critical. I was, I was telling my king last night about a woman that I knew back in um, when I was in college who um, we were both supposed to go, I'm gonna throw this out there, <laughs> really not gonna believe this. I'm the woman who doesn't even take aspirin and, um, <laughs> You know, so I'm like, you know, I've been natural since I was in my teens. I've been a vegan, vegetarian, raw for 30 years, um, 31 years this year. Um, didn't take, you know, not into chemical medications. Always find a natural cure first. Um, if you had anything at all, like I had, I get cancer and I didn't even use any chemicals to get rid of the cancer. And so for me to say something like that, what I'm about to say is like to, to give you an example of like how huge this was. Um, I wanted to get breast implants. So my old roommate from college and I were gonna go get breast implants together. And she was stunning. Like she was a stunningly gorgeous Asian girl, like, you know, uh, internally, externally. And she couldn't live with herself because she felt like she what didn't fit because she was slim. You know, she had a slender, like Asian slender type body frame. And um, she didn't feel curvy and, and pretty and everything. and. Um, and so, and I didn't feel, you know, feminine. I was, I was lacking in some of my own feminine energy towards myself. And so that was our like solution. Like, you know what, even though I won't even take an aspirin, I'm gonna go and get, you know, bags made in a factory out of silicone and have them, let my body sliced open and have them inserted in so that I feel better about myself. Um, and I know they're dangerous and I know I could die on the operating table and I'm willing to take that risk just to be able to feel good about myself. And, um, you know, recently, like those kind of conversations have come back to me in the process of my self-criticism and, and working to heal. Um, and so, yeah, so like I just wanted to kind of like throw this out there because I want to share more about this for anybody else who's going through these kind of things or when people look at me and they're like, oh, but you're pretty, you know, you're, you're smart and, and stuff. And, and I accept those things. I accept that I'm pretty and I accept that I'm beautiful and I accept that I'm knowledgeable and things like that. But um, the acceptance is like it's this little thing that sits underneath all of that. And in the everyday voice, there's still the constant criticism. I've been trying to make this live for two weeks now. And every single day, there's something wrong with my hair. Um, my eyes don't look right. Um, I look tired, <laughs> you know, like I have a reason. Every, oh, my voice is scratchy, like I have a reason every single time. And the sad thing is, it's literally not an excuse. Like I'm actually validly looking at myself and that's all I can see. Um, not all, because like I said, I'm, I'm improving. Um, but yeah, I, I, um, I would like, like also to ask for like anybody who's watching this or sharing this, I would like to hear your stories, like especially as women, men also, because we, but we have different ways that we talk to ourselves as men and women. Um, but I would like, love to hear everybody's take on um, what your journey is like, like if you've had to go through any kind of like negative self-talk and how you worked it through and what kind of steps make it um, because just telling somebody who's like been abused and who's had their you know feminine femininity and sexuality abused and things to just be like well just think positive thoughts or just do affirmations like stuff like that doesn't work for me because I can give you and I've been a natural healer for 30 years I can give you an entire rundown every new cutting-edge natural you know technology that exists I have tried it uh, so um, where I'm at right now is just a constant process of, of upgrading and just trying to clear out these voices. And like I said, like I know that this is the last block standing in the way of my abundance, um, both internally, but then also externally. Like I have a, an amazing business. I teach yoga. I've been a yoga teacher for 12 years. I write books about the yoga. I write children's books. I have all these things that I do. And yet in with all of this, um, I'm still 
like hiding what I do. It's still really difficult for me to sit on a camera here because even with the lives that I was doing with yoga, I have this like in, knot of anxiety in my stomach, like, oh my God, you know, when I play back this video, what am I gonna see? Oh, my eye is probably looking off to the side or, you know, you might be able to see a gray hair right there. And, you know, and I was like, oh no, no I'm not gonna do the live until I dye my hair. I, I had gray hair start coming in and I have like six of them now and, and I can't let people see that. And, um, <laughs> and again, you know, my king is like, really, are you really serious right now, <laughs> you know? And, um, and, and also, you know, I, I do want to also say on a, on a separate thing, I don't want to keep talking about relationship, like, you know, but, but I am really happy and, um, and I, and I want to say in conjunction with that, that, um, I feel that it's really important also to surround yourself with people who actually see the real you, um, because when I look at me through my self-critical noise, um, he's able to say to me, like, this is noise, babe, this is noise, and this is you. Can you, like, separate the two? And sometimes he's like, this is all noise. <laughs> like, throw that whole thing in the trash, you know? And I'm like, really? You know? So so for me, um, even the same thing, like, with the people who I connect with on Facebook, all the Facebook people I have sifted through, I've turned my whole timeline into, like, this garden and weed out people who are negative and toxic and have only bad stuff to say and people who celebrate life and love and want to see you do well and want to see each other do well. That's the people I want to keep in my space. Um, so it does make it a lot easier to do a video like this when I know that, you know, I've surrounded myself with people who are kind of, like, more loving and, um, and who are authentic about working through their own journey, too. You know, we all have stuff and until somebody is like bold enough to be the one to be like oh you know i have something messed up and then everybody who's been hiding it you know pressing the you know the box down and pulling the veil over is like oh my god you have that too oh thank god i'm not alone out here you know so i want to be that voice um for whoever needs to hear it because i know i need to say it i need to get out here and actually start saying stuff you know and what i was saying sorry i jump around a lot but what I was saying about my business, like I don't even get on and talk about my business. I don't talk about my gifts. I don't talk about the works I'm doing, about my vision, uh, because there's always something wrong. There's always something so wrong with me, so wrong with my physical appearance, so wrong with how scattered I am and how I just know I'm not gonna say all the words in the right order that I just don't even do any videos or share anything at all. And I've been hiding behind text and hiding behind words um, and not to say that's fully hiding because um, I also organize my thoughts better, you know, when I when I write stuff down. Obviously, you can go back and fix it a hundred times, you know. Um, and I could even have made a video, recorded it, and, and gone back and done all the editing and then posted you, you know, the, the perfected ending. But I appreciate the fact of having to do live because I'm having to learn to live with whatever flaw, whatever I accidentally say, whatever came out sounding weird and you didn't get what I meant and be okay with that. I, um, I'm so loving and so forgiving and so accepting when other people have like issues and have flaw, you know, flaws and um, stuff that they don't like or that they're working through and I can see it clearly and I'm not able to apply that to myself um, fully and so yeah that's like a huge work in progress for me. So um, yeah, I, I just wanted to kind of share that. I'm actually gonna try to start making videos every single day because doing these videos is part of my forcing myself to get out of my comfort zone, get out of the box, and then also to get out of the self-critical space um, because having this, like when, when I, I do much better when I see myself through other people's eyes because nobody is ever as mean to me as I am, <laughs> you know? Every, even when people are mean, like any, whether the, you know, the, when people are the most mean is usually the people who don't even understand what I was saying or where I was coming from anyway. When people take, make toxic or negative remarks, I'm like, uh, that doesn't even resemble me. So, um, you know, your, mar your, like, your comment has no value. Like it doesn't, it doesn't hurt me. It doesn't make me feel anything at all. Um, but then people, if somebody says something about me that does mirror me, then, you know, like I crawl back into my shell and, and whatever. But yeah, I, um, I just want to like, thank you all for like sharing this, this journey with me. Um, I'm going to probably not in the next couple ones cause I'm not that brave yet, but you know, I'm going to experiment like making videos that where I look, however I look, you know, roll out of bed in the morning with bad breath that you won't be able to smell because you're watching, but I'll know, so it'll make me cringe anyway. Um, and just get up and do something just to test myself and to keep pushing myself, you know? Um, and I feel like, um, 
I feel really supported right now. That's what I was saying, starting to say before I cut my own self off, um, that I'm in a space of like a really strong support where when I start getting that self-critical voice, I have someone who loves me, who loves me through my flaws, who loves even my flaws and is comfortable with me. And so sometimes I literally, I, sometimes the voice is so bad that I need to look to him to actually remind me of what I am, what I am looking like, you know, because it's such a different thing that people out there are seeing, you know, he, he sees something that I'm not seeing or that I, that I don't fully see. And so sometimes, so now that I'm in a safe space of love, I can actually lean on that and um, kind of like prop myself up as I'm getting there into that space myself. So Ankara, um, shout out to you, I love you. Thank you so much for being you, for being the soul that you are. Um, I really appreciate your support and I appreciate um, who you are as a being and, and the healing that you bring to help me be a better version of myself. You know, but I also, um, having said that too, I would also just like to make sure that it's said that our real healing and everything comes from within. So, so I understand that other people are able to give me the gift of reflecting back my best parts to me and, and accepting me with my flaws. But ultimately, the real journey is the, and the real goal of this process is for me to feel that space within myself without anybody else having to say anything, without anybody else's, you know, compliments or kind words or reminders where from in here the voice that runs is running not in a not in the little girl abused voice the little girl abused who's searching for her bad stuff so that she doesn't get beat i'm i need to be the voice who's like yeah man you know i'm amazing i have gifts to give the world I, hey here they are and and just be and just be free you know there's a there's a freedom in being able to to share that and you know, there's a lot of talk about sovereignty and I've been on the sovereignty movement for like ever and ever, you know, literally since I was 14, I've been F the system, down with the government. Um, we all are free. I don't want anybody ruling over me. I ran away from home so that my parents wouldn't rule over me. You know, I don't believe in anybody ruling over anyone else. We're here to assist each other and guide and share, but not to rule over. So, um, you know, it's, it's that, you know, as you, as you, as you go through your journey, it's interesting because a lot of times the journey does go from external and goes deeper and deeper within. So I have to some degree mastered what it takes to have external sovereignty, but the the final hurdle is really getting that internal sovereignty, that space where you are free because I'm not free right now. You know, even though like no matter how, I can't, first of all, I can't even get totally financially free until I believe in myself and change that, that, that static, that noise and um, vibrate a message to the universe that says like I'm unlimited and I'm my potential is everything and I can do anything um, until I get to that place I won't even physically manifest the level of income that I want to be able to share and help others in the world but also um, that sovereignty is like still fearing what other people think like it doesn't matter if you if you're on your own piece of land and you're living off grid if you still care what the people around you think you're not free yet and um, my whole entire existence is about freedom. I want to be free myself and I want to help other people be free. Everything that I've done, everything I write, everything I say, everything I, when I treat people, when I smile at somebody at the store, I, everything is like, you're free, I love you, you're free. And that's my energy and my message that I'm giving off to the world. But then there's still part of me that like is unable to receive that message, you know, and so, um, I hope for for people who have had less traumatic experiences, like who didn't have to go through sexual abuse, who didn't have to go through um, physical abuse, who didn't have to go through emotional abuse, or verbal abuse, um, that the journey of, that this can, is just a reminder to you to help you like, oh yeah, you know something, I am, I do have value, I am great, I have a message, I, I have a purpose, and you can just kind of like set that space free in you and, and live it. Um, but for those of us who have had traumatic pasts, I want you to know also um, that like, y like y I've been through a whole bunch of stuff and I'm getting there, I'm getting there, I'm getting to a place of just like love and joy and peace and, and balance and wholeness within myself. And I want you guys to come on the journey with me. <laughs> I want us to all be free. I really, you know, like really until we're all free, we're not all free, you know, and if you understand what I'm saying. Um, so, yeah, like I said, um, I'll probably just, just back up and um, share some more. Well, I don't know if I should save it for another video or maybe that'll be tomorrow's video. Maybe I'll share more about like just my personal journey 
um, or maybe just get it all out on the table now so that it's said and then that way when I go to the next thing like I'm just gonna kind of dive deeper but um, but yeah so one part of the process yeah I am gonna say it now since I'm here <laughs> um, one part of the process for me is um, getting past this hurdle so um, to be sexually abused and sexually assaulted repeatedly at seven years old um, at a chakra level, at an energetic level, at the level of your meridians, of your organs, and then of your just emotional body, or, or like all of your being is really deeply destroyed and affected by that. So before I had a chance to learn what femininity is, my femininity was taken advantage of and taken from me, um, not asked for, not treated with respect or anything like that. It was taken from me um, repeatedly. You know, I was. Um, uh, just yeah I was I was in a space I was living with strangers with, um, while my mother was in the hospital and the uh, the oldest brother in the house who was 18 at the time and, and I was seven was sexually assaulting me and I couldn't go to sleep like every day I would go to bed and uh, this person would come in the room and do whatever you know and he had a sister also who was my age who was in my grade and he would also sexually sexually assault his sister um, so both of us had to like endure this experience and she took the experience like and turned it um, turned it inward so she would go seek him out um, and and initiate things after a while um, so she internalized that whole process and made it okay so I have no idea I've never seen them again ever ever since I left that home after my mother died but um, I can imagine what if you're seven years old and you are internalizing sexual assault to the point where you're actually going to, to ask for it. Um, I can't imagine what became of her. Um, but for me, it was like a um, constant source of trauma. And um, it was something that I never was able to get over at that stage. So um, later on in my early teens, I was sexually abused again. I was sexually, I was raped um, when I, after I ran away from home and I was like looking for, play, you know, I was, was living on the streets and stuff and people would say, oh yeah, you know, you can crash on my sofa today and I would crash on a sofa and then be sexually assaulted again and then wonder, oh man, you know, what the fuck and why is this happening to me and why do people keep hurting me and not realizing that, number one, the, the unhealed paradigm was going to continue to play out in me. Um, but then also, you know, obviously my, the poor choices I was making because, you know, when you're 16, you're not that smart. <laughs> Um, living out on the streets on your own um, so I didn't have any guidance or anyone to you know show me what to do so um, so before before I reached adulthood um, my entire femininity had been so badly mistreated that I didn't know what positive healthy femininity and positive healthy self-love I even looked like and so it's been a lifelong process and like I said so you know during those years or my early years I was you know partying and I was drinking in the punk rock era and I was taking drugs and ecstasy acid all that stuff in the um, raver era and um, and so I got to cover it for a long time and then it wasn't until I had my daughter um, that I was able to actually have to look at my own real self raw and um, and deal with that you know and then so so the the destruction of the femininity is a huge part of like uh, that's such a such an ingrained part of us that trying to find your voice of self-love is incredibly difficult after something that's like very inherent in you in the root of your being it has been damaged and destroyed because you have to put it back together you have to find all the pieces of the broken mirror put all the pieces slide them back together and then figure out what piece goes where and then try to squeeze it into some kind of cohesive hole and you're never gonna have a whole mirror again you know that's like another that's alchemy when you make the mirror smooth again you know you can have like a broken mirror and some cute mosaic um, which is the level of healing that I think most people get to you know I used to call myself I used to my uh, my word for my for my process I called it broken mirror syndrome because like my light was shattered you know from such a young age and um, it was just scattered pointing off in every direction no focus no purpose and I had to my first part of my journey was smoothing all of those pieces finding all of the shattered pieces of mirror and pulling them back into place and then the next part of my journey more recently has been making all the pieces all smooth and making sure everything goes where it fits where it belongs and now for like my final stages of this of this lifelong process um, is is creating the alchemy within and with the connections that I have with other people who who care enough to guide me and help me with this part of the journey 
to um, to smooth that glass, you know, to melt that down and turn it back into the smooth mirror that it once was so that my light can shine the way it was meant to, the way, it, you know, it was intended when I was created. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's what the work is. Um, and then also, yeah, you know, like I said, uh, you know, about the abuse part. So there's, so, so there are basically two things that I'm personally battling with and why there's not a day that goes by where I don't have some kind of like negative, destructive things to say about myself. Um, and, or even sometimes, you know, I'll see, uh, another woman who's stunningly beautiful and I'm like super, super all about my sisters. I love my sisters. I love to celebrate their beauty, their accomplishments. And I, it really gives me joy when I see other people do well. Like it's like this deep joy from like all the way within my being. So it's not like a hater kind of a jealousy, but it's this, like it, it sometimes when I see somebody who's like exceptionally beautiful or exceptionally, um, graceful or you know some has some kind of air of some femininity that I wish that I had um, it just triggers the negative self-talk you know so it's not like hater jealousy like I wish they didn't have that and screw them for having it it's like it just triggers something in me that's like man you know what oh, you're so ungraceful and man if you were just as pretty as that and you know what you need to do and if you could only fix this and tweak that and change this about yourself you would be that pretty too and um and I need to stop that you know because uh, this isn't going anywhere, you know, I mean, we're not, I'm not in, I'm not in a teleportation device here. I haven't mastered how to totally, you know, restructure my DNA so that my entire being shifts. And even if I did, um, should I, you know, uh, I should be, I should love this because this is the vessel I was given. This is what I was given to come here to serve my purpose here in the world. So that means this is the perfect vessel. This is the most beautiful vessel. This is the best thing I could have come in because that's the one that was chosen. That's when I chose my guardians, my ancestors, all of us who put this whole thing together chose this. So it's like a, an insult to the process to not love it, you know? And I'm aware of all that mentally and spiritually, but you know, the, the, the habitual um, negative self-talk is definitely a work in progress. And, um, so yeah, so pretty much like that's it. I do want to share one last thing, you know, if I can plug my yoga without making myself cringe. Um, one of the ways that I've gotten as far as I did so far in the process is actually by using yoga. There are yoga meditations and techniques that actually um, restructure the neurons in your brain because there, it's been proven by science now. Of course, yoga knew this like 6,000 years ago and 12,000 years ago. But um, Western science has proven that we have uh, neurons that run through the left side and the right side of our brains that have different functions. So negative self-talk actually runs through the right side of the brain. There are circuits there and when you have a constant negative self-talk it like grooves these circuits and it's like a like a train station. When the train station is open um, that's the, that's where the train is going to run through. It's going to run through an open track rather than like a closed station where it's got to pull in and pause the brakes and wait for the station master to come out and open the gates. It's going to run through a track that's already open. So when you constantly use these negative self-talk circuits, after a while, all of the circuits in your brain start to wire, will wire the, like the, the, the conversational parts will start to wire through the easiest route to pass through. So if your negative self-talk is your biggest, widest, gigantic tube to pass down, the, the circuits are going to be like, oh, just go down there, easier track. Oh, go down there. So after a while, you're actually recircuiting, restructuring all of your thoughts into this, through this negative loop. And that, so, so physically, so it's not just, oh, I need to, you know, say affirmations and do better. And I need to just love myself. Um, yeah, you know, airy fairy, cool. But this is like actual physiology. You know, if you don't restructure your actual body, um, it will stay the same, you know? I mean, you have to physically restructure it. So I am, have been putting the effort, the, the, the reason I got to the level of relationship and healing and balance that I did in that area was because of the yoga. I, to, like I said, I took flower essences and I was like doing yoga meditations every single day, physically restructuring my circuits in my mind in order to stop feeling like love is me feeling sorry for somebody and trying to help them do better. Love is me being guilty that somebody else is not as happy or as knowledgeable or as joyful or as whatever as me and I need to help them. Um, I was able to shift that 
that that self conversation out of me because I didn't know what love looked like. I didn't. I wasn't raised in an environment of love between a man and a woman, so I didn't know what it looked like. Um, and I had to look at it, and then of course, you know, Hollywood tries to feed you its version, you know. And when I realized that there wasn't, you know, nobody was gonna run down the runway um, after a plane that I was taking off on <laughs> with flowers to say, oh, I love you infinitely and I'll die without you. Like when I realized that that wasn't what real life love actually looks like either, I had to constantly, you know, like keep, okay, is this what it looks like? Is this what it looks like? And keep trying until, um, until I was able to find what it actually looked like for me and then restructure my being, the, the aspects of my being and the negative habits that I've formed over my life and restructure my habits to accommodate what actual real love looked like. So, like I said, again, I've had success in doing that. So I know this is gonna be a successful journey. Um, and even just the fact that I'm up here and I'm able to actually sit in front of the camera, which is all cracked because my phone fell <laughs> and broke and the phone is cracked. I have like six gray hairs here, possibly more. Um, and I am able to still talk to you guys and I'm not feeling ashamed. I have a little bit of anxiety, do I do. Um, but without feeling ashamed or without trying to like watch myself in the mirror and see if like I look cute while I'm saying words or if you guys could see my cheekbones <laughs> and stuff. Um, I'm just saying what I what was here to say and, and the rest of me will just have to be what it is, you know? And, and so that's a huge leap in, um, that's just a huge difference for me already just the fact that i am here hey peace 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 brother i'm so glad to see you here thank you um and so just the fact that i've been able to um get to the stage gives me hope for my own healing and um like i said so because i feel like i've arrived at this stage i just want to kind of like stay on top of this connect with you all ask you all to please support me in this journey of self-love, self-connection, and also to remember that you guys are love, you're worth love, I love you, and that if any of you have any kind of trauma, um, any kind of like mental issues that you're suffering through where you're going through stuff like this, please like inbox me, let's do this together, let's heal. Um, all of my work is about this. I want us to be healthy and whole and balanced. That's like my everything that I do is for that. So. Um, and you know, to me, like a real healer is a person who can heal themselves. And I can say I've healed myself through other things I've been through. So I would also like to get to the end of this and say, wow, you know, I'm living in this place of abundance now. I'm able to give to others at a level I was never able to give before. I'm able to have a life that I only dreamed about before and show others how to have that life too, you know? Um, that means everything to me. And so I have to come out of my comfort zone and heal this last piece for my own personal joy. I wanna be able to show my daughters, I have two daughters, I wanna be able to show them. Well, okay, now I have three. So I just wanna make sure <laughs> to put that out there too. But yes, now I have three daughters and I want to be a positive example for all of them and give them the, the best version of myself and remind them that the internal voice they should be hearing is love peace and acceptance you know so I think that's it for now um, thank you guys so much for for sharing this with me and for being here um, for participating in my process and I'm here for all of you guys like literally you know anytime connect with me build with me hit me up I love you all peace